I'm doing an overview for the lab manual for guide for computer forensics and investigation fifth edition by Andrew Blitz. First and foremost, I'm doing lab three, uh, lab 3.1, creating a mini win FE boot CD. Our author is a tad bit crazy in this chapter because his instructions don't make a lot of sense. So the big part here is first is navigate to access data. We're downloading the FTK imager and we're doing the FTK imager light. We're going to be downloading it. And like normal, okay, I want it to be really slow right now. Fill out the appropriate information and then check your email. I already checked my email and I already downloaded it. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and right click and extract all. And our lab instructions say to install it. So I'm going to go and double click on FTK Imager. And you're going to notice it already installs, it's already going to open because the FTK Imager 3.118, we already have installed. This is the light version, so it's on the go. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of it for now. All right, the next thing is I'm going to be looking at for my mini WinFE zip file. It was on the DVD for our lab book. It's under DVD files, mini WinFE. I'm going to be extracting it to C drive. It does take a moment, but I'm also going to be extracting win hex as well. So here is everything for the mini win FE. I'm going to go back to my DVD files. The win hex is actually under x ray. Again, extract all. I'm going to be putting this in my mini F mini win fe folder all right so everything that i need is there next i'm going to be creating a windows installation files folder I'm going to be sticking in a Windows 8 disk, or specifically a Windows 8.1 disk. So it does show Windows 8.1. I'm not going to be installing it. I'm actually just going to be opening it and copying all the files to my Windows installation files folder. Okay, so you'll notice there is no WinBuilder EXE here. We need to go back to my mini WinFE. And WinBuilder is there. This is what we'll be building our ISO for our mini WinFE. So first thing it wants us to do is look at programs. It wants us to verify that we have FAU check, FTK imager check. We need to actually set the path to the FTK imager. We did this and we saved it in my student folder, my downloads. And it says to do it via the FTK Imager. 
imager.exe. Uh, there it goes. Okay, the instructions are so beyond screwy right now. I'm going to actually close out of this. It specifically doesn't say, but it does want the image light folder in our win or mini win fe installation area. Now I'm going to open up my win builder. The author is yeah. So FTK imager. I'm going to change that to again my imager light. Wants us to go win hex as well. Which should also be there. Next, it wants us to look at our tools. We're going to be doing the ADK for Windows 8.1. Make sure that x86 is there. Click on source, source directory. We copied all of it to C drive, Windows PE. We did installation files. Verify your screen and then click play. It should build everything. So do we want to continue? So we're going to detect the following settings. We have an x86 32-bit uh, ISO, which that's fine. These are our appropriate language and build settings. And we're going to be go ahead and installing a an additional boot WIM, which happens to be a Windows image file. Do we want to continue? Yes, we do. And it should build. Okay, so it may take a while, and I have noticed sometimes there's a few errors that pop up. Our author was very clear that these errors are okay, and if they do occur, just move past them. So this is one of them. All right, so it wants us to go back to our win, uh, uh, mini WinFE project output, and we should have about a 240 meg uh, WinPE disk. And that's actually the end of chapter three, or lab 3.1. The author needs to do some correcting, so I'm hoping to have some corrections for this lab that they give to students. But in the meantime, at least kind of hope that this helps. All right, if you hold on a second, we will be moving on to 3.2. So a lot of 3.2 actually deals with just looking at things. So we're going to go ahead and open up the FTK imager on our desktop. We're going to be adding evidence. We're going to be selecting the an image file. We're going to be browsing to our labs, which should be, it says our work labs folder, which we are in our works labs folder. But you'll notice we don't see any other cases. It only had us copy over stuff for lab two. So I'm going to make an executive decision here and I'm going to be going to my data files and I'm actually going to copy over my data files. I'm going to be copying them over to my work folder labs data. I'm going to copy over all my data files. Just because our lab environment, they didn't say to, but the author, I'm pretty sure, expected this to happen, and they just didn't write it. All right, so 
back here, we're going to be browsing labs, data, chapter three, and we are looking at chapter three, project two, and go ahead and click on finish. Expand out on the left hand side. So this is a image they've already done for us for a USB FAT32 device. Okay, so once we have it mounted, I'm going to be clicking on the C3 Project 2. And it says, look at its properties. Properties are here. And a lot of people got confused with it's not highlighting anything, but click on it. You will see that it's a raw DD form. It has bytes per sector, 512, sector count, 249,341, and that's okay. Let's go ahead and expand out the root folder. And in the root folder, we'll see red X's for things that have been deleted. Click each of the files, included the deleted ones, so we can view them. So again, I'm going to go ahead and maximize the screen. And we're basically just looking at the properties of each one. You see the different sizes, all of that good things. We're going to click on the hexadecimal version. Up here, we'll see hex. So we activate hex. We want to be looking at our bank location dock. And here it is in hexadecimal. It wants us to look at the file signature and file size. But you'll notice it doesn't have a file signature on this side at all. The author in the next few comments about FAT16, I don't quite understand because we're not looking at any of that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. I'm going to move on to the interior safe JPEG. And here is our interior JPEG. It says click on the Click the eyeglass on the toolbar button so we can see the image. And there we are. So we can transfer between hex, text, and images. And actually, that's the end of this lab. So, yes, so I'm going to go back. I do actually want to go, and I want to go through a few of these just so I can kind of look through them. Again, looking through like the bank's documents, I'm looking at both the eyeglass, text, and hex for all of them. All right, that's the end of chapter 3.2. Let's go on to 3.3. Uh, We're going to be looking at an NTFS image. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove this evidence. We're going to add another image file. This time we're adding image file chapter 3, project 3. And we're going to expand it out. And again, it's a raw. It is 512 bytes, 251 sectors. And here is our flash drive. But this time our flash drive is formatted as NTFS as opposed to FAT32. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and expand out root. And interesting, we have two additional folders. We have an area for bad clusters. And it's not showing properly, but we're supposed to have a folder for MFT as well. So when you click on root, we're supposed to be able to see bad clusters and some additional items, but we aren't seeing any of those. But we get bad clusters, so that was the important part. So we're going to click on root. Here are all of the files that we have. Oh, here they are. Here is our so they're not showing us folders, but that's fine. 
there is our MTF, MFT and MTF, MFT mirror files and our bad clusters file. But we also have our data as well, a little bit further below. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and look at some of the photos. Let's look at the hex for some of them. So you'll see that they are different. Now let's look at the bank location doc. In the hexadecimal. Notice down here we have things like date change, date created, date modified, date access, date change it again, NFT. So it gives us more information. If we look at the interior safe, same thing. Date created, date modified, date accessed, date changed. So when we look at NTFS compared to that, we have a few additional options. All right, let's go ahead and remove this. Let's add another image file. Chapter 3, Project 4. Go and expand it out. You're going to notice we're using an HFS plus image. We're going to be clicking on our USB device. First of all, notice there is no root folder. So we're going to be examining the hidden folders, things like the .journal, .journal info, anything that has a dot in front of it. Uh, the properties pane also shows Unix permissions. So here we have additional permissions. We're going to look at the uh, trash folder. You'll notice that we have a 501 folder inside of it, but none of them have red X's to indicate that they were deleted. So we're going to click each of the uh, files. And again, we're going to go through them to see the permissions that they have. Notice the Unix permissions. Read, write, copy, read, write, copy, read, write, copy. So if you're used to Linux or Unix, you should be able to decode the appropriate permissions or the numbers of their permissions. All right, yeah, go through each of them just so that we can see them. Next, let's go ahead and, well, our hexadecimal is already there. Let's navigate back to our folder, our USB drive. That way we could look at bank location. Again, the file signatures is the same as in FAT32 and in TFS, but the start location different. So if we actually highlight the appropriate portion here, you'll see again the section that it starts in is different. Into your safe, same thing. Its location where it's stored is different. And again, that's really the end of this chapter is more of a getting our PE set up and then just getting you uh, used to examining different types of file types. Thank you.